and welcome back. Our second conversation is the other side of that political coin in a manner of speaking. Uh, we had before the break the PUP's candidate for the Corozal Bay by-elections. We have now the United Democratic Party's candidate. He's also been a four-time mayor of Corozal Town and he's now running as a standard bearer for Corozal B. Good morning, Mr. Hilberto Campos. Hey, good morning, Isani. Good morning, Merlin. Yeah. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to be on this program once more. It's always a pleasure to be here. Let's begin from a general perspective uh, by talking about your campaign efforts. Um, it's slightly different this time around, considering the fact that you're not running for a mural position, but uh, to represent Corozal Bay in the House of Representatives. Let's talk about what that experience has been like for you, considering the fact as well that you've been sort of on a hiatus from electoral politics. Yeah, it's been, um, it's been a while since I've done the House to House campaign. Um, I would probably say six, seven years that I hadn't been on that campaign trail as active as now, uh, which is House to House campaigning is always the key to success to any, any political and any person seeking political office. Um, this time, it was a very um, sudden and unfortunate incident that happened. I had no idea. I didn't have the intention to be on the forefront of um, electoral politics once again so quick. Yes, I had the intention to, to seek political office uh, in the future. However, the un unfortunate uh, circumstances have me here with an opportunity to offer myself to serve the people of my town. Uh, in this case, it would be of um, Corozal Bay. Um, but the host to host campaign has been very interesting. It, it, we have been on the ground along. I have the fortune and the, the, the luck of being along with the, with the slate that is contesting the municipal election, something that I'm very familiar with. And it has been um, very good so far. We, we have a very energetic team and working together. We have canvas, I would believe, approximately 95 to almost 100% of the houses in Corozalde. Now, yours is a rather unique situation in that while the area representative who was elected on November 11th is from the People's United Party, he did not really get to serve his people because of this unfortunate situation that has us here. So one would say then that your immediate predecessor in that particular case is uh, a former United Democratic Party area representative. Now, that being the case, you're canvassing all of these homes and speaking with residents. What has been their primary concern for Corozal B? Um, you're right uh, about the um, very sudden and un 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 very unforeseen circumstances that came up on us um, with the past era representative. And in this case, um, if you would consider my predecessor, the, the, the former minister, before that, um, the concerns are, are, are at this moment are a little bit different. The fact that Gilberto Campos' name is on the ballot and uh, that we have about, about 100, a little bit over 100 days of a new administration, which was elected by an overwhelming uh, margin and, and throughout the entire country. It was a very overwhelming victory for the PUP and as such, as, as intelligent uh, people, we, we have to admit that and accept that. It was the decision of the people of, of Belize and in turn of Corozal Bay. However, um, it is of the opinion, I am of the opinion and with the, the Corozal Bay residents that I'm visiting, that they, somewhere or the other, the, 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 the judgment will be passed here on March 3rd. And it is unfortunate, but at the same time, the Constitution gives us an opportunity to elect a new era representative, one that will be sent to Belmopan to represent them based on the on the unpopularity that has been achieved by this present administration. And that is the, the message. I cannot put it any, any better than that. It is plain and straight. Um, I've been meeting on the campaign trail comments as such that if the majority of the PUP seats are won throughout the country when it comes to the municipalities, 
uh, the Indonesians will have to actually take whatever comes their way with this present administration. It's not, not a news or it's no news if I want to go into criticisms and say about talk about levels of or the highest levels of nepotism ever seen if we want to talk about the cutting down of, of, of CXCs. But these are the issues that are being that I'm being faced with. These are the comments of the people of Corozal Bay. And if you combine the, 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 the wrong decisions made by this present administration, along with the fact that the, someone that has had a very good relationship with the electorate here in Corozal Bay is offering himself to serve them, then, then we have a very high possibility of sending, of the people of Corozal Bay, sending a message uh, to the government of Belize, to the new administration, rather than than, than, than any predecessor or any, any worse than before. Alberto, what has it been like for you to, to head out onto the campaign trail? Um, you've only had about two months to do so uh, since you weren't on the ballot uh, in the November 11th election. How do you play catch up in such a short time? Um, yes, you're right. Um, it, it, it is going to be, it is, it is a, a very hard task. Um, Two months is a very limited, um, small amount of time mm -hmm. for me to, to, to achieve what I want to do. It didn't, didn't really give me an opportunity to form any campaign structure. However, I, I, I will mention to you and to Sani that the, my campaign is based on the, on the 12 years relationship that I had with the people of Corozal Tongue. And Corozal is within the Tongue limits meaning that um, the history that I have in the way I had run my administration, which is my pride and joy. I, I have a, I, I remember in, in the 2015, 2013, in that, that, that area, um, when we were convincing the World Bank to, to, to reinvest back into Belize, I, I want to say that, um, and the Corozalinos are well aware of this, that UNDPs, CIF, World Bank, UNICEF, the different uh, international organizations were, were actually had us under a microscope and Corozal was the number one municipality when it came to accountability and transparency. And this is, this is not just something that I mentioned, this is well documented. And the people of Corozal were well aware of this situation. Uh, one of the hallmark, uh, hallmark of my administration was the fact that we were very, we would always have consultations, public consultations. It didn't matter the, the, any decision made at the council level was always uh, uh, put up to proper consultation with the people of Corozal. And, and that alone um, gives me that leverage over any, any, any opponent or any, kind, any political party. I, I have this uh, relationship that I establish with the people. I have different accomplishments when it comes to what we delivered during these 12 years, uh, winning the cleanest municipality from, from the uh, organizations such as uh, Love Foundation and, and different uh, around the country. So it's not something that uh, I am not uh, completely new. Yes, I had a, a time about four or six years that I didn't hit the campaign trail. I went in 2015, I'm sorry, 2018, when I decided not to contest in my candidacy, then of course I, I gave way to some new people to bring forth new ideas at the municipal level. And of course I've always, I think I mentioned it to Green Moody, Channel 5, my last interview that I gave, that I will always be available to serve at any, in any capacity and at any level serve my country. And well, Fortunate and unfortunate incidents have combined, and here I am offering myself to serve the people of Corozal, be to represent them properly in the National Assembly. Hilberta, tell us a bit about what it's like to campaign. I think you, you noted um, that there are clear uh, things that people may bring up in, on your campaign trail against the current administration, but this issue goes twofold. There's kind of the revelation of some of the ish, some of the the um, misdeeds that happened in the past administration, and there's also a very critical look of what's happening with the current administration. How do you do? You try to differentiate yourself in any way on the campaign trail. Is that important to you? 
course, it is important, and you're right. It's a combination of both. Um, I, I've, I've mentioned before in other interviews that the Corozal B, uh, the electorate here is a very modern electorate. It's a very young electorate, but most importantly, very intelligent. I think that they have reached the point that they will not tolerate anything from here onwards. They will not tolerate any, 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 anything that is not in favor of the working class or of the betterment of the constituency. Um, yes, mentioning about, about the past administration, of course, as, as the mayor in 2018, I, I was asked, I've always been uh, supportive of the United Democratic Party. I'm a proud member of the UGP, but however, we in turn are going through changes. Um, I am new to, to this uh, level of politics. I'm offering to represent the, the people of Corazalbi in the National Assembly. I bring different, different things. I'm not the, the, I have never been at that level before. I think that I have a clean track record that speaks uh, volumes. I, that is why I could have the face and, and the courage and I could stand up and campaign on a host to host basis, meeting everyone in Corozalbi with nothing with my head held up high. That is the, the changes that we're bringing here in, in the UDP. And then you have a, a newcomer to politics like Roger Arana, who is the mayoral candidate, a very young, energetic, very talented, very capable young man offering himself that that is what we bring it's going to be a, it's a complete new day here in, in, in Corozal Bay for the United Democratic Party and what it is that we have to offer to the people mm. of this uh, of this constituency does what? it change at all you know when you think of by-elections especially um, the biggest difference is you pretty much know where you're going to be mm -hmm. um, in the House of Representatives so on election day nobody really knows that but you know you're going to be in opposition. Um, how does that change the commitment that you can make to people when, when you go out to campaign? When I say um, that the electorate of Corozal B or the voters of Corozal B are very intelligent, I meant that by all means. Mm -hmm. It's incredible to, to, to listen to the people of Corozal B. Um, we have, they have evolved so much from, from 2006 when I first joined local politics uh, at the municipal level. One of the, the strongest messages that, that, that the people of Corozalbe have for me is the fact that they, they are looking forward to proper representation in the National Assembly. And yet, they are very aware of the fact that where I will be in the opposition. And a, incredibly, to, to, for, for, from them, listening from them, that they are, they are well aware of the fact that in any democracy, it's very important to have a certain level of opposition within the house. And, and that is, is something that we have to applaud. It's not the fact that they, it's not your party in power. You won't be able to accomplish this or that. It is totally different. It is we need someone that will voice the opinion of the Corozal B voters. In this case, um, we have had instances such as the reduction of the CXCs. I have never heard my opponent, who is an educator, say anything against that. And that is what the people of Corozal B are looking for. It, it is not the, only the fact that they that what it is that they, you could hand out to them, but rather how good you will you will represent them and, and will not allow the present administration to get away with anything that they have. It's always, it's very amazing for me to listen to that message, talking about the level of, a, of opposition within the House and the importance of it in, in a democracy. And Let this is coming from the Corozal Bay voters, not from me. What has been the level of support you've gotten from the leadership of your party? There's a new leader at the helm of the United Democratic Party. There's a new chairman as well, uh, notwithstanding the fact that you guys, as we all know, are in opposition. What has been the level of support that you've received from the secretariat? I've always had that, uh, that support from my party. I think that, again, my record speaks for itself. I have always had the opportunity fortune that I've never, I was never challenged when in my application went in as a mayoral candidate. And in this case, of course, I used to work along with the past era representative. And um, upon this, this uh, unfortunate incident coming forward, um, I was the first one that decided that it was time to, to do something and to serve my, my, my constituency. 
my tongue and the support of the Secretariat has always been there for me. Now let's talk about some of the things that you hope to be able to achieve in Corozal, um, Corozal Bay. Uh, you're putting yourself forward for, uh, as the area representative, very different from being um, a mayor, where you're kind of taking care of uh, just uh, some of the minor things to keep the municipality going. What, what are your hopes for Corozal Bay as their representative? There is a... Um there is much that, that we could do together. I, I have to say that the the, um, the mayor, sorry, the, the municipal candidates, including the mayoral candidate, um, Mr. Aran, uh, we're talking about Vanessa, um, Brancharan, Cristobal Bab, uh, Guadalupe Barahona, and uh, others. They, are, they were people that were actually employed under the past administration at the municipality. Most of them work under my administration. They are well aware of the capabilities and the degree of autonomy that the municipal bodies have. Uh, we have came forth with a pledge, uh, a list of pledges to the people of, of Corozal, and that was an effort combined with, of course, my input and the mayor candidate's input. Uh, together, we, we, have, we have different uh, we, have, we know we are well aware of the situation when it comes to the pandemic. We are well aware, well aware of the fact that the, the country is not in the best uh, financial state, which is even more important to mention that uh, we will have to be very innovative when it comes to working for the people of Corozal Bay and in turn to the people of Corozal Tongue. Uh, we have a long list of pages when it comes to education, when it comes to um, trying to capitalize on the local tourism, on the national tourism, on making Corozal um, sort of uh, focus to, 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 to bring forth that specifics. And of course, after the pandemic, which we definitely look forward to, to, to more tapping into the Mexican market when it comes to the opportunities of bringing across the tourism from our neighbors. How do we continue to try to resuscitate the economy of Corozal. I, I know you're talking about tourism. I know you're talking about perhaps other areas that we can bring together to kind of jumpstart the economy. But for quite some time, Corozal has been economically depressed. And it's, it's something that you can't get away from because your party, which was the previous government for 12 years, you know, had the entire country to deal with, but it seems as if though Corozal, for whatever reason, may have been left behind. How do you now attempt to sort of bring some kind of life, breathe new, a breath of fresh air back into Corozal's economy? Well, I'll be honest with you. I, one of the uh, reasons why I decided to run um, as, as the standard bearer, or sorry, as the area representative of Corozal, is the warrior-like attitude of the Corozalinos. And that came up um, more evident uh, these last months of when, during the pandemic, for all people actually um, have set an example of, of what it is to live under extreme conditions like these um, when the pandemic came on. We had started seeing uh, different uh, lives on, on Facebook, people finding ways to move the economy, to, to move forward. Uh, one of the areas that we um, uh, and discussion with the with the with the main uh, municipal candidates, of course, um, when it comes to homemade products, the promotion of, of these of, of local uh, entrepreneurs, when it comes to manufacturing local products, it's incredible to see that we actually that Rosalinos actually withdrew the, the the positive side of, of of a state of emergency as such, and, and the consumption of local products started to to expand within the, the municipality. This is the, the type of support that we're looking for to give to the people to continue to encourage these consumptions of local products, to, to continue with the innovation that the Corozalinos have. And, and that is the way forward. Um, again, I mentioned that the present administration would, has done a lot of finger pointing. It's not, to, it's not time to finger point. It's time to find ways to move forward and to move our people forward. In this case, for us all, I, I have no, no doubt in my mind 
that upon electing a new council, we're going to continue to revolutionize what we started during this pandemic to, to support the local entrepreneurs. During my administration, of course, as the mayor of Corozal of this town, I supported, I supported the, the ideas of the community. And one of the most successful one was the Art in the Park program, which was uh, the brainchild of it is Deborah Wilkes Gray, who came forward to me one day and said, you know what, they have this idea. And, and of course, by all means, we supported Art in the Park. It exploded uh, like uh, nowhere in the, in the country had seen um, the display of, 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 of artists, talented people, artisans, bringing out their things and, and, and to sell in the, in the Central Park. Central Park came to life to a very high level. And unfortunately, I mean, it's there to see that the present administration just couldn't handle the, the, the levels. Probably we had set the bars too high when it came to economic movement within Corozal Tong. Not, I'm not talking about Corozal District, I'm talking about Corozal Tong. Remember that Corozal Bay falls within the, 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 the limits of Corozal Tong. In yes. this case, I will be representing the people of Corozal Bay, which is only a section of Corozal Tong. But all of these things happened during my administration. We we had economic movement when when we started when we constructed the futsal football court um, football futsal court in the south end area. On the weekends we had the activities with three four up to five hundred people present, and and that in turn created a economic movement when it comes to local food vendors and, and different stuff like that. Yeah. So it's going to be. Very interesting, but uh, again, it's going to be such innovation that it will be needed. And we have that, we definitely have the talent. It's just a matter of putting our ideas together. All right, Gilberto, we have just about one minute or less <laughs> for uh, this segment, and it's an opportunity for you to speak directly to the voters in Corozal Bay uh, and let them know why you feel that you are the best candidate for them come uh, March 3rd. Thank you very much. I, I have served my people for four consecutive terms as the mayor of this town. Um, Corozalbi is always uh, present in my heart. I am true and honest, sincere uh, desire to serve the people of this place. Corozalbi is looking for proper representation, especially in these times. After 100 days in office, the present administration definitely needs a higher level of opposition and ready to be their voice to represent them properly. And I look forward to do that after March 3rd. All right. Thank you so much for joining us and please stay safe on the campaign trail. Thank you. All right. With that, we're going to go ahead and take a break. When we come back, while we talk about elections and budget, March is actually the month where we celebrate Women's Month and Child Simulation Month. We'll be focusing on uh, Women's Month and some of the activities after the break. Please stay tuned.